The vast majority of Westerners now have a negative perception of China, but I believe the reason for that is a lack of understanding. You see, it's only natural for us to fear something that we don't understand. But I'm an American citizen that lived in China for over 10 years, and I have a very different perspective than the typical Westerner who fears China, but has yet to spend a single day inside that country. To really understand China, you need to go there. You need to spend time there. And it's even better if you have an opportunity to live there work there and see how local Chinese are really adapting. They're adopting and they're growing. And China is one of the fastest growing places in the world. It's an incredible country, but there definitely needs to be better nuance and more understanding. In today's video, I'm going to share with you 10 lessons that I learned from 10 years in China to give you that nuance and experience. The first lesson I learned is the importance of family. You see, for the vast majority of Chinese, they spend most of the calendar year working. It's not uncommon for somebody to work 51 straight weeks and only get a single week of holiday. Now, for many Chinese, they actually leave their small villages and hometowns and they go to the bigger cities. Big cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Shenzhen. They relocate there for work purposes. And only once a year are they able to go back home to their village or their hometown to see their families. The time they make this annual trip is during Tunjie, which is the spring festival and the most important holiday in all of China. What's incredible is that if you are in China during the spring festival, you will be able to witness the largest urban migration in the entire world, with hundreds of millions of Chinese packing into trains, automobiles, cars, planes, whatever they can, and traveling 20, 30, even 40 hours to get back home to spend that holiday with their family. Chinese people literally live for Tunjie and the ability to go home and spend that precious time with your family. Now, when I was an expat living in China, I immediately understood just how much more important my family was because I was on the other side of the world and they weren't readily accessible to me anymore. And I made it a goal that when I was living in China, that moving forward, I would prioritize spending time with my family. And every year when I left China to come back home to America, I made a trip back to Iowa to visit my grandmother. And I tell you, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. My grandmother had 20 grandchildren. 19 of them lived in the United States. I was the only one that lived abroad and I lived on the other side of the planet. But every year I was the only grandkid that made it a priority to go back to Iowa and visit my grandmother. The other 19 all lived in America. It would have been a very easy trip for them to do. And I'm not trying to sound boastful and say that I'm better than them. I just had a different perspective. I realized by going to China just how important that family is. And this is a lesson that I learned from living and observing Chinese people every day. Now, the second lesson I learned is how important education is inside the Chinese society. And this is something that we really observe when you look at even Chinese immigrants that come to the United States. Many times we look at Chinese immigrants and we say, wow, they're incredibly hardworking. They're very smart. They are very successful usually. And it's because of this hard work ethic. Now, when I first went to China, I had a translator and she told me that growing up, her mother said, I'm not gonna teach you how to cook because for you, the most important thing is to get a good education. I want you to get a good education because this is going to be your ticket into a better life. And we want you to make sure that you can learn English, that you study hard and that you can have amazing opportunities. And that is what's so incredible. If you're from my parents' generation in China, you grew up in a very large, poor agrarian society, but you've also been witness to the greatest economic boom in the past 50 years. And China's government being able to lift over 700 million people from poverty into the middle class. And this is the goal for almost every Chinese family. Let's get the next generation better. Let's make sure that our kids' children are well-educated. We're gonna prioritize that because that is gonna be the pathway to getting a better life in the future. Now, the third lesson I learned is that Chinese people are actually some of the best problem solvers I've ever met. There's a phrase in Chinese called xiang banfa. And xiang means to think, banfa means a solution. And what's interesting is, is that when you're living life in China, sometimes you'll encounter some difficulties. Sometimes you'll encounter a situation that seems almost impossible. But this is the phrase that Chinese people always use. It is this ability to think of a solution. And this is really goes into more of a mindset. A lot of times when I'm back here in America, sometimes people will say to me, you know, Cyrus, it's not possible to do that. We got to think of something else. I don't think we can do that. And immediately I remember my experiences in China and I think to myself, and I, you can immediately start to problem solve. So actually it is a more of a mindset thing. And this is something that Chinese people taught me. It's really helped me a lot in life is to always think of a solution, to never give up and to continue to work very hard. Now, the fourth lesson I learned in China is that the average Chinese person knows significantly more about America and the Western world 
than Americans and the Western world knows about China. You know, we have this perception in the United States that the Chinese people are essentially cut off from the world. They have no idea what's going on outside the world and that they live in this bubble called China. Don't forget, before the COVID pandemic, the Chinese were the number one tourists in the world, making over a hundred million trips around the world and amazingly making a hundred million trips back home to China. Chinese people are well-traveled, they're well-educated, and they are very, very curious about the outside world. For example, Chinese students now take 12 years of English, and it's been incredible to watch the rise of the English language inside of China. You talk to any of the new generation and many of these children speak phenomenal English. It's actually really incredible to see. And this is something that I just want more Americans to understand. Because growing up in America, we always learn about our home country. America has been a superpower for many, many years now. And it's actually a double-edged sword because many Americans, we don't learn about other cultures. We don't learn about other countries. We typically don't care. We only want to know about America. But this is one of the things that I've been really amazed to see from the Chinese is this ability to learn about the world around us. I mean, you can talk about incredible history, complex geopolitics, and a lot of Chinese are very well educated. It will really come as a surprise. So I think this is another great lesson, is just your ability to you know, understand more of the world around you. This is something that the average, the typical American certainly does not have in their toolbox. But for me as an American that lived abroad, this is something that I really value and is really one of the most valuable experiences of me leaving America and living abroad, especially in China. Now, the fifth lesson that I learned while living in China is the ability to save money. And I tell you, this is one of the biggest differences between the United States and China. In the United States, we live on debt. Our government is filled with debt. The average American is consumed with debt. We live in a culture where in America, if you don't have it, and you want it, get a credit card, pay a bunch of interest payments, and just live your American dream, get whatever you want. The problem with this is, is that we have a record number of Americans that simply can't afford things and are just living and drowning in debt. Now, the incredible thing is that the very opposite is true for Chinese people. From the beginning, Chinese people are very good savers of money. And what was incredible is that when I was working in Shanghai, I would meet people that would have a monthly salary of maybe five to 600 US dollars a month. That would be their monthly salary. And out of that, they were able to be, save an incredible 20, 30, even 40% of that salary and take that money and send it back home to the village to go ahead and pay for their parents. Or maybe they had a younger sibling that they needed education. And this was an incredible thing is this ability to save money. And this is something that, for example, when the COVID pandemic hit in China, every Chinese family, they had a nest egg. They had you know, savings in the bank that allowed them to really lock down without the fear of you know, running out of money. Basically, there is a record number of Americans today that are literally living paycheck to paycheck. If they miss one week of paycheck, they're going to be in a very difficult financial situation. And this ability to save money and prioritize that, obviously it goes without saying, it's gonna set you up for a very better life in the future. And again, this is something that I learned from Chinese people. Now, the sixth lesson that I learned was the ability to have an open mind. And I believe that this is one of the most important skills that I've been able to develop. And I think that it really has been very instrumental into me achieving success, you know, as I've been living abroad for over 15 years. Now, the interesting thing is, is that growing up in America, we are often told that, you know, America is the best country in the world. We have the best government in the world. We are the best. We're America. We're number one. But, and it's very easy for many American expats and Westerners to come to to China with all of these preconceived notions. A lot of expats come to China and think, well, the American or the Western way is superior to anything in China. Therefore, you need to do things our way. But the interesting thing is, is that Chinese civilization has been a continuous thing for over 5,000 years. There's a lot of things that we need to learn from China as well. And I think it's really important that when you go to China, you don't go to China with these preconceived notions. And that's really something that I would recommend for anybody that travels abroad. You know, I'm not going to go to Europe up and let's say go to Norway and start thinking, oh, you know, Norwegians, you need to start doing it the American way. You know, they've had their way for many, many years. And what I want to do is I want to go and observe and try to learn as much as I can. And that ability to approach things with an open mind, it'll help you out in the business world. It'll help you out in real life because you are going to be working with many different people from different cultures and different backgrounds. And again, it's all about xiangbanfa. Think of a solution. How do we work together? How do we find a way to coexist? And again, it's, it's very difficult to do that when you approach things with a closed mind. So be open-minded. And that's again why I'm making this video because 
If you're one of those Westerners that have a negative perception of China, I challenge you. Why don't you go to China? Go experience it for yourself and see what China is really like. Have an open mind. Be more willing to try new things. Now, the seventh lesson that I learned was the ability to learn a new language. And I have to be honest, one of the biggest draws for me to go and work in China was that ability to learn Chinese. I really wanted to learn a foreign language. And I thought, wow, if I could learn Mandarin Chinese, this would really set me up for success for the future in my life. And there's a famous quote from Nelson Mandela that absolutely I love, and it really rings true to my heart. Nelson Mandela said, when you speak to a man in a language that he understands, it goes to his head. But if you speak to to a, a man in a language that is his mother tongue, it goes to his heart. And this is one of the key things that I've learned is just that ability to learn a new language. If you learn a new language, you're going to challenge yourself. Chinese is one of the most difficult languages in the world. It has four tones. It's extremely complex. It takes a lot of time practicing this language. But the incredible thing is that even if you go to China and learn a few words, you'll be amazed at the hospitality and just the reception from Chinese people. I remember when I first went to China and I only know two words, ni hao, hello in Chinese. And people will be like, wow, and at the time I, I didn't understand what they said, right? They were saying, wow, your Chinese is so good. But I couldn't understand because all I knew how to say was ni hao. But the key thing was they were so welcoming because I was speaking to their hearts, not just their minds. Every Chinese understands hello. But when a foreigner says ni hao, there's something different there. And this is how you start making these connections between you know, Chinese and Western culture. This is how we start building these bridges as it comes down to communication and taking the effort. Learn a little bit about China. Learn a little bit about Chinese culture. It's gonna go a long way. And that's essentially what we're trying to do on this YouTube channel is to build bridges, is to how do we find a way, how do we xiang banfa and find a way to coexist on this, on this planet? We've only got one world. And as you can see, I'm walking around the beautiful Red Rock Mountains here in Nevada. It's a beautiful place. I mean, the world is so incredible. I mean, we've got incredible mountains like this in China as well. We have them in America. I mean, America, the Chinese name for America is Mei Guo, which literally translates to beautiful country. So learn some Chinese, learn a foreign language, have a little bit different perspective. It's going to help you out so much in your life. The eighth lesson that I learned in China is that China is more similar to a continent than it is a country. And let me explain what I mean by this. A lot of times we look at China as a one single place. It's a land full of 1.4 billion Chinese people. But China is incredibly much more complex than that. In China, there are over 56 different ethnic minorities that comprise Chinese people. And it's really important to understand that because right now in China, there are over 300 different dialects that are spoken throughout the country. So when you say that Chinese people speak Chinese, it's a true statement. But what language, what dialect do they speak? Because if you're in Shanghai and you're speaking to a local Shanghai Ren, they'll be speaking Shanghainese to you. And if you go around the country, you'll hear all of these different dialects. You go to the north, they eat different types of food. Down in the south, we have dim sum. Out west, you're in Chongqing, Chengdu. Right? They love to eat very spicy food. And so you have all this amazing variety of experiences and languages and cultures and food. There is so much diversity inside of China. I think you could spend a lifetime traveling in China and it wouldn't be enough. There's just so much to see. And that's just one thing I want people to have a little bit better perspective of China. Again, we look at it as this one single place, but it's incredibly diverse. And that's why it's also such a complex nation because there are a lot of uh, different languages being spoken and how does China unite? How does China unite 1.4 billion people together? And that's why the government has gone on a very big mission of promoting the Mandarin language, making sure that every Chinese citizen, in addition to their local dialects, is able to speak Mandarin. So they have that common tongue and the nation can unite. And it's an incredible thing when you start traveling in China and seeing how incredibly diverse that country is. Now, the ninth lesson that I learned is the incredible importance of health. And this is something that I really value from Chinese people is just the diet that Chinese people uh, partake in. And it's very different than what we have here in the West. What's interesting is here in America, we have access to some of the best foods in the world, but yet we have one of the most unhealthy populations in the world. And I think a large part of that is this reliance on pharmaceuticals. Here in the United States, our entire culture is dominated by Western pharmaceutical companies that essentially will want to sell you a pill for any ailment that you have. And I have to be honest, for myself, I am very, very skeptical of Western medicine. Now, I know that there are 
are benefits and there's a time and place when it is needed. But the problem is, is that with a healthy diet and an active lifestyle, we could cure so many of the diseases that are so prevalent in the United States today. But you talk to the average American, especially the ones that are over the age of 50, they're on two, three, four, five different kinds of medications. And this pharmaceutical industry just dominates our society here. Whereas in China, it's a much different culture. There is traditional Chinese medicine. They drink a tremendous amount of healthy teas and really prioritize eating much more healthy, less processed foods. When I went to China, I actually lived a much more healthier lifestyle because I started eating more like a Chinese. I didn't eat fast food. I learned to cook Chinese food in my home. I'd go to Chinese restaurants and it's that priority to eat whole natural food that I really learned from China that has really helped me live a much more healthy lifestyle today. Now the next lesson is probably the most important one in this entire video. And it is that we are more similar than we are different. And this is what I want you to understand. A lot of Westerners, when we look at China, we forget to that there are 1.4 billion people living in China that are really no different than you and me, okay? Every Chinese person, they want the same things in their lives that, you, that we do here in America or other Western countries. They wanna have a good job. They wanna make sure that their children are taken care of. They wanna make sure that the next generation lives a better life than we get to live. And this is what they're working hard. Let me share with you some photos that my best friend sent me who lives in Shanghai. These are incredible because what it shows is just really what life is like in China. This is a cafe in Shanghai. And look what this family's doing. It's a mom and dad sitting down with their child having an afternoon meal. It's really as simple as that. Other people are there gathering with friends, you know, gossiping, talking about the latest TV shows, doing the same things that we do in the Western world. If you look at another photo here, you can see that people are just strolling the avenue. This is, this is what China's like. This is what people are doing. They're living a normal life, no different than you and me in whatever country that you're from. And what's even more incredible is, is despite the tensions between the United States and China, this is in Xintiandi, and look at that American brand, Shake Shack, and the queue of people there, you know, wanting to try some American food, still embracing, you know, the many American companies that are doing business in China and that are still providing that kind of cultural bridge, you know, bridging people through culture and food and all of the good things that we have here in America. And this is really what I want people to understand is that when we start looking at China, I want you to think of the Chinese people there. I want you to know that many Chinese people are extremely happy. They're extremely proud of their country. They're proud of the rise that has happened over the last 50 years. And quite frankly, many Chinese people are just very happy with their quality of lives. It has been improving a tremendous amount. There are literally hundreds of thousands of foreigners that call China home. And this is what I want people to have. And I hope that I can give you this perspective in today's video is that China is a lot more similar to the same things that we have here in the Western world. And in many ways, even sometimes a lot better. When we look at, for example, just how advanced technology is inside China. I mean, they truly are inventing some incredible technologies that are going to change the future of our world. And I think it's really important for people to have a much more open mind and be open to learning from China. Now, I have one final lesson that I'm gonna share with you because there's a Chinese phrase that I absolutely love and I think it is so important. What this translates is, is that when you're born, you can't bring it, and when you die, you can't take it with you. It's actually a very similar biblical principle. You know, growing up in the West, I learned in the Bible that it said, naked a man comes into this world and naked he shall leave. Essentially, what these phrases in both Western and Chinese culture are teaching you is that we need to live our life to the best here on earth. When we come into this world, we have nothing. And when we leave this world, we will also have nothing. And it's basically encouraging you to keep things in perspective that we just need to live the best life that we can and really be that change that we want to see in the world. And again, I really thank you for all of you, you know, giving me your time. Time is our most valuable asset in the world. And I really want to thank all of you for spending so much time with me here today on YouTube. And I hope that this, that this video can give you that nuance, that perspective, and really help you understand China a lot more. I'm incredibly grateful for the 10 years that I spent in China, and I'm also really happy to announce that this June, I will be returning back to Shanghai for the first time in three and a half years. And it is my goal with this YouTube channel to bring the channel on the road. You know, I started this channel in early 2020, um, you know, as the world started locking down with the pandemic. I had a vision, I wanted to share my experiences in China. I wanted to share all of the many things that I learned and continue to, you know, analyze China, continue to, you know, live my China dream. And I'm really excited that I can basically be able to take this, this YouTube channel and bring you along the journey. Because when we go back to China in June, 
We're gonna have some amazing projects that we're gonna be working on. We're gonna have some amazing stories that need to be told. And essentially, I'm gonna be sharing with you the real China that oftentimes is not portrayed in the Western media. We're gonna open that up and we're gonna take you along for the journey. So again, if you've made it to this point in the video, you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for spending time with me. Again, my name is Cyrus Jansen. Coming live from my home here in Nevada of the United States. Everybody, stay positive, and I will see you all in our next video soon.